This video is to go over RSM version 2. Version 3 is still in development at this moment. Carbon mod is not supported by version 2. And here we go. So go ahead and download your RSM file. Uh, have your license key on hand. So double click the zip file. I like to put my stuff in the C drive so I just made a for, uh, folder here called tutorial. That's where we're going to be installing this. Select those files, drag those in there. Go ahead and open up RSM. Run anyway. And enter your license key. Once you do that, you are greeted with this. These are the default settings. So, server port, query port, Archon port, Rust Plus port. These, if you have any other services that use Steam CMD and stuff like that, any other services, um, all these values have to be unique compared to any other servers that you're running, okay? In my case, I am using these ports elsewhere, so I'm gonna redo this one as 1112, 11113, 11114, 11115, and the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory. This is what will show up in the server list. This is the description. You can link your website if you have a website. And then the banner, which is the image that is loaded. Um, this is your server map size, the seed for it. Whenever there's a wipe or anything, you can just do generate and get a new one. You can also do archon password, and you can generate a password with that too. First things first, though, we've just opened it up. And I like to just start by doing a save server config and then come over here uh, to server installer because right now we don't have any of the server files we have no rust server files to run so we have to do install server and then wait for this to finish obviously this is going to take a while while this is doing this I'm going to explain the firewall rules um, RSM is a Windows only software it's not officially supported on Linux and you know wine and all that stuff um, but go ahead and come to the start menu and type in Windows Firewall with advanced security. And those ports, the 11112 through the 11115, we are going to forward those. So come here under inbound rules, do new rule, do port, next. We're going to do both TCP and UDP. Th there are specifics, not all of them have to be TCP and UDP. It's just, it's easier just to do this and be done with it. So 11112 hyphen 11115, enter. Allow the connection, allow all three. Give it the name, I don't know, CCP, test server, whatever you want. This is just for your information. Make another rule. We're going to do the UDP port. So UDP 11112, 11115. Next, allow, yep, UDP test server, enter. So now your computer is saying, all right, we're going to allow this file, this service, to essentially not be blocked by the firewall, okay? Outside connections are allowed in, in terms of the computer. This is still not accessible from the internet, so your buddies still cannot play if they're, you know, not on your network, okay? Um, notice also, I'm going to go back to server config here. Notice how I left server IP as 0000. You are going to leave this as that unless you have a very specific situation um, where you have to set that. But 99% of people, it's just zero. So uh, once the server gets done installing, we'll come over to the oxide uh, panel here and do install. But we got to wait for the server to actually be installed first. While this is installing, we're going to go over, uh, in my case, port forwarding for my Unify routers. Now, everyone's routers are different, so this is not necessarily going to be the same for you. But the important thing is you need to log into your router. In my case, my IP is 192.168.2.1. You can find this by going to CMD and typing ipconfig slash all. And you'll see this right here, your uh, default gateway, that right there. Now, in my case, I've I've got the ports set up on this thing to say 8.1, but that's not that's not it. It's actually 2.1. So once I'm in here, at least for Ubiquity, you come to the settings, you come to uh, security, and you come to port forwarding, and you make a new entry. Now, this entry, obviously, uh, if we open up that uh, we gotta open up that command prompt again. My bad. CMD, I config slash all. 
the IP of this machine, this server machine is 8.2 in my case. So I would name this whatever the port, it's going to be a range, so that 11112 hyphen 11115. And for Unify's sake, this is the port that the um, internet sees, and then forwarded port is like the internal. So I could, I could, in RSM, I could change these ports to be something else, and then they would still point to that. That's not a use case you're going to have to worry about more than likely. But then the forwarded IP is 192.168.8.2, the IP of this machine locally on the local LAN network. Once I click add entry on this, this will be publicly viewable from the internet. Obviously, I'm not going to do that. But basically, the essential thing is, is in your router or whatever, find the port forwarding section, and you should be good to go once you add these values in. Um, if you're using a cellular network, it's not possible. They don't allow port forwarding. Um, some services like uh, Xfinity I've seen when I've helped people out from the Discord uh, have like game firewalls, which you have to disable. It's, again, every router is different. If you need help, just message Quantum or me. Um, I'm not affiliated with RSM. I'm just a customer making a video. But, uh, yeah. So let's see what this is looking like here. We are at 99%. Okay, it just finished. So, boom, there's all of our files. Ta-da! If we were to hit start server right now, it would work. But uh, I'm going to save the server config again. I'm doing this habitually just because I, I had an instance where I was installing a test server and I didn't click this, and the server had a very, very, very odd issue uh, that I had to just reinstall from scratch. But, yeah. So next we want Oxide, so we're going to do install and update. That's going to grab all that stuff from the GitHub. Automagically for you. And when that's done, we can come over here, server config one more time. Start server, start server. Now this portion takes a while, so just be very patient. Um, there are going to be red error messages. That is normal. That's just part of Rust and Unity. But uh, this first boot up, it's actually having to generate the procedural map. So just like when you're loading into a server, how your machine has to download that seed and then kind of load that procedural information. I mean, it's, yeah, that's just how it is. <laughs> so um, when this gets done, we will be in Rust and... Um, I'm not going to be able to actually show being in game, but yeah, that's all that there is to it.